Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 25 of the Leak of Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Whoops, what did I click on? <laughs> join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's poem. Uh, yeah, okay. Today's poem is Interleaving String, number 97. I give an S1, S2, S3, find whether S3 is formed by an interleaving of S1 and S2. Okay, I mean... Uh, the, the bounce are small enough. This is a very canonical um, uh, dynamic programming problem. Um, I feel like we've been doing a lot of dynamic programming problems lately. Or maybe it's just me getting confused about it. Uh, yeah, I mean, the follow-up is easy if you are very practiced in dynamic programming. And the other parts are also straightforward if you've done it. I don't really have much to add today. Maybe I'm just a little bit tired, to, to be honest, which I apologize. I uh, just came back from the gym. But but basically, the idea is try to think about uh, ways you can think about brute forcing, right? And in this particular case, well, if you have S1, S2, and S3, then the, if the first character is the same, then you test whether the first character of S3 is from S1 or S2. And then you kind of just keep on doing it, you know, in that way. I think that's really it. I don't know that there's anything... Um, no, and that's the, the the brute force version of it. And of course, the way to think about it is that now you're trying to process this, the, the rest of the string as a suffix. And of course, the suffix is always going to be the same for a given strain. So you can represent that with using a number, which is usually, you know, the index or something like this is what I do, right? So yeah, so... Maybe I would say, like, uh, it's possible or something. Uh, so then you have I1, I2, I3. Technically, this looks like N cubed because it has three inputs. You know, 100, 100, 100. We'll, 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 we'll figure it out later on the memorization. Uh, 100, 100 times 200, but still N cubed. Or 100 cubed anyway. Um, but we'll figure that out later, right? So basically, if uh, I3 is equal to... And three, they don't, they, hmm. I assume S3 is length is equal to these two added. I don't know if it's worth do, doing a check for it, uh, but maybe, maybe it is, right? So yeah, if N1 plus N2 is not equal to, to length of S3, we turn force. Uh, but yeah, otherwise, if I3 is equal to N1 plus N2, then basically we, we've done everything, so this is returned true, uh, because now you're basically matching an empty string. If you look at the, the I3 suffix of this, um, the, of course, this assumes that this is the same as ooh, what happened? Uh, N3, which I guess we'll just write it. Why not? Right? Maybe that's just more straightforward. Uh, yeah. And then now... We just have to check both cases, right? Which is if S1 of I1 is equal to S3 of I3. And of course, we have to make sure that I1 is less than N1, meaning that we still have strings left or characters left on the S1 string. Then we can, um, and if this is if this is possible, N is possible of I plus 1, I2, I3 plus 1, then we return true. We also, by, you know, in a similar way, do the same thing for, you know, um, for S2, meaning the next time, uh, we take the first character from I, or uh, from S2 instead. Otherwise, we return false, and that's pretty much it. I mean, this is way before. Oops. Uh, well, that's basically the concept, right? And of course, I'm not going to submit it. But if I do submit it, it, it this is probably going to time out, um, especially if, if it doesn't work. Like we'll do even just like a reasonable one, right? Right. So this should time out. If not, then. Man. Technology is fast. Technology is fast. Hmm. That's actually surprising, actually. Hmm. Well, you, you take both every time. I guess two to the... I, I got lazy. This is only two to the ten. I guess I can double it. Double it. Um, 
right now two to the 20 sh may it should be slow enough but i guess if not then we'll just i mean my point is still that you know uh it is too slow so now you have to do the memorization right yeah there you go uh yeah the, the thing to notice is that there is an there is an invariant which is i1 plus i2 is equal to i3 right this is always going to be true and as a result um your uh two of the variables determine the dirt it doesn't matter which one you choose to i wouldn't say avoid but just like you know but that's always going to be the case so now uh yeah so you can just take any two even though I1 can go from 0 to N1, I2 can go from 0 to N2, I3 can go from 0 to N3. But like I said, only two of them can be fixed, right? Because the third one is uniquely determined by the other two. So, yeah. So in this case, it is actually just N squared, or N1 times N2. Uh, yeah. So let, let's actually memorize on that then, right? Know that we, can, as I said, you you don't even need to consider I three in the caching, oops, because it is literally the same, right? Uh, otherwise, yeah, this part it's a little bit funky because of the early termination, but yeah, we'll, we'll just write it out. You could probably write this in a cleaner way, but uh, I mean, well, the cleaner way is probably just to use uh the decorator. But I'm you know, yeah. trying to be a little bit. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. Oh, how is there an extra space? Oh, I, I just paste the wall. Uh, let's index our bounds. Do, 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 do. Did I have them backwards? Uh. So I1 can go to N1. Oh, 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 I knew. I added a plus one on this part, but forgot to add on this part for some reason. Hmm, that's weird. But yeah, so this looks much better. Let's give it a submit. And there you go. Apparently I've done it three times before, so. Uh, uh, but yeah. Uh, what's the complexity space and time here? Well, the complexity for space and time is going to be N1 times N2 in both cases, because, well, I mean, you can kind of... The reason why I write it out this way, and people ask me why I don't just, you know, especially even in the teaching, why I don't just write out cash, because there are some scenarios in which, you know, um, the, the, the range of the parameters is not necessarily the complexity, right? And here it is much easier to see the upper bound of the space and time complexity if you kind of write out the matrix like this, right? The, the two-dimensional array like this. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be n1 times n2. And the follow-up is, can you do it in additional, uh, only, only um, O of N2 or N1, whichever shorter uh, memory. And the answer is yes. You can, this is top-down uh, memorization. You can actually rewrite this as bottoms up. And when you do, there, you can use the space optimization trick. Uh, I'm not going to go over it that much in this video. Uh, I have a video for it if you want to kind of learn more about it. Don't remember the problem that I go over in that one, but the idea is still pretty much the same. So yeah. Um, anyway, let me know what you think. Stay good, stay healthy, to good mental health. Man, this week is going by quick. I'll see y'all later and take care. Bye-bye.